This is the second part of inner product spaces, and that is the projection of one vector onto another. Now, depending on what classes you've had before you got here, you might have seen some of this. You might know what projection is, but I'm going to define it in terms of inner product spaces so that projection can be calculated even if your inner product space is not the traditional Euclidean inner product. So suppose I take two vectors, right? Here is vector v, and here is vector u. And what I would like to do is I'd like to drop a perpendicular from u, from the arrow at the end of u, onto vector v. Okay, so when I drop that perpendicular, this piece here is the projection of u onto v. I could also write it like this. The projection of u onto v. What that means is it's a fraction of the length of vector v. Now, I suppose if I had drawn this all the way up, I could have done a projection exactly to the end of vector v. If it went beyond, I guess it could even be beyond that point. But what I, the way I drew it, I'm talking about a fraction of vector v. So the projection of u onto vector v. Well, look at this angle in here between those two vectors. If I set this up and called this piece down here, the projection, then I could write it as the cosine of theta equals the projection over the magnitude of u, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse, the adjacent side is a projection, the hypotenuse is u. So what is that projection? That projection is some scalar times the vector. So the projection is some scalar times the vector. And so if I can figure out what that scalar is, then that will tell me how much of the magnitude of vector v I want. So let's run through the process and see if I can explain where my formula comes from. I could just be cheap and give you the formula, but that wouldn't be nearly as much fun. So let's see if we can go through and explain this. The projection of u onto v is what? It's some scalar times the magnitude of vector v. Well, that must mean that the cosine of theta is that projection over the magnitude of u. All right, so I'm going back up here. If cosine is a projection over the magnitude of u, I'm calling my projection a times the magnitude of v divided by the magnitude of vector u. Now, we know how to write cosines in terms of inner product spaces. It's going to be the dot product, or we're going to advance it now to be the Euclidean inner product of u and v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. And I claim that that equals a times the magnitude of v over the magnitude of u. All right. So now, let's get rid of that u on both sides by multiplying it out. All right, so I'll multiply both sides by the magnitude of u, which at this point is just a number. And I'll get the inner product of u and v over the magnitude of v equals a times the magnitude of v. And now at this stage, I'm going to take that magnitude v from the right-hand side and I'm going to divide it out. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over the magnitude of vector v. And I end up with, on the left side, uh, inner product of u and v. And on the bottom, magnitude v times magnitude v. On the right side, I just get a. So I've got two pieces left to this. One is, remember there was a rule, oh, I don't know. 30 minutes ago or so, had said that the inner product of a vector and itself is the same as the magnitude of the vector squared. Well, down the bottom here, I've got the magnitude of the vector times the magnitude of the vector. So let's replace that with the magnitude of the vector squared. And really, I can then replace that with the magnitude v or inner product of v and v. Then I have one thing left to do. So let's clean this up a little bit. 
Okay, let's write this as the inner product of u and v over the inner product of v and v equals a. But remember, I wanted a times the vector itself. So this a it tells me how much of the vector that I want projected. So let's multiply not by a scalar, but by the vector itself. Okay, the formula that's on the left hand side is the projection. So the projection of u onto v is the inner product of u and v over the inner product of v and v times the vector. So this first part here, that inner product with the division sign, that gives me the scalar. And then I have to multiply the scalar times the vector to see how much of it I want. So let's try an example. I'm going to do it in R2 so that it'll be relatively easy to calculate and then easy to sort of graph quickly and check our answer. So suppose I've got this vector u as 2, negative 2. And I've got vector v as 3, 1. I want to find the projection of u onto v. So what do I need? I need the inner product of u and v. And then eventually I'm going to need the inner product of v and v. So the inner product of u and v, I'm using Euclidean inner products because it wasn't defined any other way. 2 times 3 plus negative 2 times 1 is 6 minus 2, which is 4. The inner product of v and v is 3 times 3 plus 1 times 1, which is 10. So if I calculate the inner product of u and v, divided by the inner product of v and v, that's going to be 4 divided by 10, which is 2 fifths. So the projection is 2 fifths of vector v, right? I'm projecting onto vector v, so it's 2 fifths of the vector 3, 1. Well, that's going to be 6 over 5, comma, 2 over 5. What does it look like? Well, let's take a look. Up here, let's draw in vector u, 2 over and 2 down. Vector v is 3 over and 1 up. And I'm going from u on to v. So I'm going this way, up. Does it look like this piece here could be the vector 6 fifths, 2 fifths? Sure. Right? If that's 2, that could be 1 and, two fi uh, one, and 1 fifth, and then 2 fifths is 4 tenths. So yeah, it would make sense that that vector, that portion of the vector, is 6 fifths, 2 fifths. That's the projection of u onto v. Can I do the projection of v onto u? Let's try it. Same set of vectors. Let's look at the projection of v onto u. So this is going to be the inner product of v and u over the inner product of u and u, u and u. And then that times, not vector v anymore, but vector u. We already have the numerator, right? The numerator is still 4, right? The inner product of u and v and v and u are the same thing. What's the inner product of u and u? What's u? u is 2, negative 2. So let's find the inner product of 2, negative 2 with itself. So if I do 2, negative 2, and 2, negative 2, 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. That gives me 8. So the inner product of u and u is 8. So my scalar is a half. So I want a half of vector u, which we said was 2, negative 2. So that projection is 1, negative 1. What does it look like? Let's try it out. Let's put a little scale in here. And the vector 2, negative 2 goes 2 to the right and 2 down. The other vector we said went 3 over and 1 up. And that's v and that's u. So this time I want the projection of v onto u. So now I want the vector that goes over here. Could that be the vector 1, negative 1? Yep, seems very likely that could be the vector 1, negative 1. So that's what projection is. You just have to look to see which way you're doing it. And if you're 
inner products are not Euclidean inner products, then you may have to follow some other rule, you know, the old three U1, V1 plus two U2, V2s or something like that in order to get that projection. That's the end of this.